CBS Radio Mystery Theater presents... Come in. Welcome. I'm E.G. Marshall. Today, a tale of conscience... The self-accusing fear that most of us at one time or another have experienced. When it's but a twinge of conscience, we can push it from us. Shove it away, out of sight, under the rug. Dispose of it easily. But when conscience is keenly felt, it can be so all-consuming that there's but one solution. And that is death. All I asked for, Anna, was a loan from your mother to get me started. I'm sorry she said no. Ask her again. What do you think I like begging... Oh, no, not me. I'm not going to. And as of now, they're going to have to pay their own way. If your mother and father don't shell out and help share the expenses, I'm going to tell them to get out, pack up, and leave. Jack, they're my parents. And it's my roof they're living under, food and rent free. Well, two can play at this game. I want them out of here. Our mystery drama, The Pardon, was taken from an original tale by Emil Bazin and written especially for the Mystery Theater by Gerald Keene. It stars Larry Haynes. I'll be back shortly with Act One. We're in a small mining town in Pennsylvania. Coal is again coming to the surface, much in demand. The town is beginning to prosper, but there are still the poor. And the family of Jack and his wife, Anna, are very poor. Jack was a miner once until his chest was crushed. Now the only work he can find is as an odd job man, which pays little. He's poor for the pocket, the spirit, and the disposition. Anna! Anna! Where is everybody? Anna! I'll smell anything on the stove at six o'clock. Maybe she's next door. I'll take a look outside. Anna, where are you? Evening, Jack. Oh, oh, good evening, Officer Garrity. <laughs> What's the problem, Jack? Huh? Problem? What problem? Who said there was a problem? Well, yeah, how many years have you known me, Jack? Oh, I don't know. Since you were a boy, about uh, 29, 30 years. Mm-hmm. And I know you and Anna and your mother-in-law and father-in-law. So you're practically family. So you only call me Officer Garrity when something's bothering you. Well... It's Anna and her mother, I uh, come home, nothing cooking. Happens at least twice a week. You know, those two start gabbing, the world could come to an end. They wouldn't notice it. What am I supposed to do? Oh, easy, Jack. Don't get yourself riled. Yeah, just wait till you're married. Mm. The best girls have all got husbands. You don't know how lucky you are. You've got Anna. Oh, sure. I am so lucky. Forty-five, four patched ribs, right shoulder dislocated permanently. Insurance I got for the accident all gone. I can't make a decent wage. Boy, am I lucky. Now, I mean to have Anna for a wife. You're also working every day. Oh, yeah, yeah, so I am, Officer Garrity. Cleaning out laboratories, sweeping floors, raking leaves. You call that work? Now, why me, Chuck? Why do all the bad things fall on my doorstep? What did I do to deserve that? Maybe you need a change. Yeah, and I was uh, thinking just that, you know. But I couldn't decide which Ritz Hotel to go to, Paris or Harrisburg. Or maybe maybe go to Saratoga, taking all the races. Now, you know I didn't mean that, Jack. Now, you can't know what I mean. You know, I see those guys every single day going down into the pits. Well, they've got my job. They're making good money, but the elevator falls on me. I'm out of the game. I'm washed up. Are you through crying? How would you like to take over Bill's machine shop? What are you kidding? You mean Bill wants out of his business? Mm, that's what I heard say today. I bet if you talked to him, he'd make you a good price. Machine shop? Oh, boy, would I ever love that. But I don't have a dime. Well, what about Anna's mother? I bet she's good for it. At least the down payment. My mother-in-law is the biggest tightwad since Scrooge. Now, why do you think she and Albert live with us? They made a fortune on their condominium in Florida, come up north years ago, moved in on us. You know where she's got her money? Right in a big old trunk at the foot of a bed. Well, maybe your father-in-law could tuck her into it. Bill isn't asking for big money. What, Albert? He's weak as water. Not that I can blame him married to that 
Well, you know, when you're young, Chuck, you think you're just marrying one girl. You don't know you're marrying her whole family. Yeah. I'd think it over if I were you, Jack. Bill's place would be just the deal for you. Ask your mother-in-law. You never know. Yo, well, I know. It's hopeless. I'm pretty sure she's got a fortune locked up in her trunk. But we'll never see it. I'll tell you what. I can go talk to Herb Draper at the bank. He's married to my sister. Now, don't be crazy, Chuck. You think a bank is going to give me credit? Me, Jack Tanner, a 45-year-old handyman with a strapped-up chest? No steady job? Don't make me laugh. I sure wish you wouldn't talk like that. It's no good for a man to be as sour as you are. It, it, uh, it eats away at your insides. You know, you just reminded me. Something else is eating away at my insides, and that I won't stand for. What's that? I came home hungry, and I aim to be fed. And I've had just about enough from your mother. Because of her, I have to wait for two hours for my dinner. And then when I ask her a civil question, I get a reply that turns my stomach. It's not that. I know, I know, I know what you're going to say. She's an old lady. She has a bad heart. I shouldn't ask her questions about money. I've heard all that for years. But tonight, tonight, that was too much. I ask a mother, how would you like your son-in-law to go into the machine shop business? It's a wonderful opportunity. I might be able to buy it if you'll help me swing the down payment. And she gives me this look. Your own mother, Anna. Flesh, flesh and blood. And she says, you heard her. She says, if you can't afford it, don't do it. It's too much for any man to take, Anna. I'm not like your father sitting here keeping quiet. Oh, but you can take it. She's your wife. I can. Dad, say something. I don't know what there is to say, Anna. No, it's not. It's not Albert's fault. Your, your mother's got all the money. I'm not asking for a gift. It's a loan. It's a business investment. I know the machine shop business inside out. Now, I'll never get this chance to get on my feet again. Now, maybe, maybe you can make her understand, Albert, that this is a chance for her own daughter to be a lot better off than married to an ex-coal miner who does odd jobs. This is terrible, fighting about money in your own family. Uh, your mother's temperamental, Anna. She, she's always been that way. Do you think, do you think I like begging? No, I'm, I'm not going to. And I tell you this, Albert. The way I feel right now, if you and she and his mother don't shell out with something, you're going to have to pack up and leave. Jack, what are you saying? Do you think it's about time? They're my parents. And it's my roof they're living under, food and rent free. I don't think Jack's being unreasonable, Anna. I'll talk to your mother. Now, now look, I have no quarrel with you, Albert. You're all right. Now, we all make mistakes. You know what yours were. Getting stuck in a mine elevator shaft was mine. But I don't have to make things worse for myself by living under the same roof with those I can't get along with. Now, I'm sorry, but that's it. If I can't breathe easily, I might as well be dead. Jack, come to bed. You've been standing there in the dark for an hour staring out of the window. I uh, didn't know you were awake. Or Please come to bed. I'm not sleepy. Are you still angry at Mother? Am I crazy or doesn't she have cash money in that trunk of hers and jewelry? Now, what good is it in a trunk? Well, I've never seen it. But you've heard her talk about it often enough, haven't you? Her widow's might, whatever that means. Well, I guess everybody knows she inherited a lot from Grandpa. And of course, she has all Grandma's jewelry. Anna, all I asked for was a loan, a business loan. And she never liked oh, me. Oh, of course she did. She does now. No, 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 never. And you know why? Her daughter, who went to the Philadelphia School of Music, ended up marrying a coal miner. Well, she hated That's that. That's not true. But that didn't stop them from moving in with us. Well, they were getting old. They, they had no one to take care of them. We asked them well, to. Well, that, that was all right. That was all right when I was making money in the mine. I thought it'd be good for you, Anna, having your folks here. But when I was laid up and after getting out of the hospital, did they ever go to the supermarket with you and say, let me buy this week's groceries? No, never. Oh, Jack, please, you wake her up. and she, She's right next door. No, we'll be pleased to switch to the bedside. Oh, yeah, hey, that's, that's another thing. Albert, you'll have to sleep downstairs. You snore, and I don't wish to be disturbed. He's on the sofa, and she's next door in the bedroom. Jack, you're all dressed. Will you turn that light off? I'm going out. At this hour? Don't, Jack, you need your rest. For what? I don't have a job tomorrow. This darn trunk lock. It won't give. Who? What are you doing what? there? Hey, let go of me. Let there? go of Stop me, it, old you woman. Will you from let trunk? go? Get away, get away from me. 
What are you doing, Jack? Jack, get away from that truck. I'm looking for something. Go back to bed. Jack, will you stop it? Jack, stop it. Jack, you're throwing every... Mother! What is it, Mother? Jack! Jack, she's over here. She's lying on the floor. Mother, will you get up? She tried to stop me. She must have fallen down. Mother, will you get up? Jack! Jack, help me put her back on the bed. Oh, come on. She's faking. And there's nothing in this trunk but old clothes, hats, shoes. And where's the mother, money? Mother, mother, will you wake up? Nothing but shoes. So what is it, Donna? Dad, quick, it's, it's mother. There's got to be a box somewhere in this trunk. There's a money box. Dad, look at her. She's lying there. Hey, give me a hand, Donna. We'll, we'll lift her back up on the bed. What has happened? I, I, I think I saw her bling her eyes, Mother. Mother, are you all right? I, I, I think she's just Mother, say something. What happened, Jack? Mother, Jack, what are you doing in that trunk? There's nothing, not a turn, saying not a dime. Just a lot of old clothes. She was lying to us the whole time. She must have spent it all. Jack, Jack, put down that iron bar. Have you gone crazy? Yes, I've gone crazy. Driven crazy oh, by lies. You're smashing it. Lies. Stupid old trunk. Oh. Nothing in it but rags. Anna. What is it, Dad? She's not breathing. Mother's dead. What we have just heard may have been an accident, or it may have been a crime. If it contains a spark of evil, it will light the fires of fear. You remember the saying, the mills of the gods grind slowly, but they grind exceeding fine? Once begun, those wheels of conscience can grind upon the mind of man till he may be crushed. I shall return shortly with Act Two. call the hand of fate is often powered by the hand of man. As I said, the wheels are set into motion and under their own weight gather speed, sometimes of terrifying consequence. The result can be fatal, as it is in that small upstairs room where a woman lies dead, her husband horror-struck, and her daughter trembling with a growing suspicion her mother may have been murdered. Chuck, I'm so glad you're here. Hello, Anna. You, uh, you phoned the station house? Some trouble? Please come in, Chuck. Yeah, lucky I just came off duty. My one night, you know. Well, what is it? What happened? Mother's dead. Who? Your mother? Mm-hmm. Where is she? Upstairs. Lying on her bed. Uh, and where's your dad? He's with her. And Jack? He went out. Oh, did you call a doctor? It wasn't any use. How come? There was nothing a doctor could do. Uh, better have a look. Um, which way is it? Oh, just up these stairs. Yeah. Well, uh, what happened to Jack? Where'd he go? I don't know. He just ran out. At this time of night in his pajamas? No, he was all dressed. Uh, this door? No, no, no. That's our bedroom. Jack's in mine. Uh-huh. Daddy, he sleeps downstairs. Mother's is is the one down down here. It's uh, this one. Okay. Oh, Albert, I'm. Uh... I'm awfully sorry about this. Oh, Dad, Dad, just all right, Dad, don't cry. It, it'll be all right. No, let me have a look. Uh, huh? Yeah, yeah, no question about it. That's a stroke, maybe. I'll, uh, I'll put in a call to the coroner. Please, Dad. No, what, why don't you go back downstairs and make yourself some coffee? Yeah, that's a good idea. Go ahead, Albert. You, you can't accomplish anything up here. Oh, all these years together... No, she's gone. All right, go on, Dad. Go on downstairs. If I need to ask you some questions, I'll ask you later, sir, okay? I, I can't... I just can't believe it. Here. What happened in this room? It looks like an earthquake struck. The, the way that trunk's been smashed to pieces. Clothes all over the floor. Person must have been looking for something. That's obvious. Anna, did you catch someone in here? Well, there was no one here but us. But what's this here? Hmm. An iron bar. Uh, no, no, don't touch it. It might have fingerprints. Um, supposing we go back downstairs, Anna, I'll call the station house. Uh, then maybe you'd better tell me exactly what you know. I'm 
it stiff. The jury's been out two hours. Well, if they feel anything like I do, they won't know how to decide. All the time, Jack's been in jail. No matter how many times I went to see him, he'd just sit there behind that wire fence. I, I couldn't get him to open his mouth. He He's in some other world. I hope they believed him. You know that it was an accident that Mother got up and fell and hit her head. Well, of course, that's how it happened. But I could see they didn't like him breaking open that trunk, his fingerprints all over the heavy bar, and, and him admitting he wanted to take her money. Yeah, that counted against him. Uh, Jack was so angry that night. He did terrible things when you're angry. Well, he'd never taken anything that didn't belong to him in his whole life. It was the iron bar. If they don't find him innocent, it'll be because of that iron bar. The jury. And Jack said he only used it to, to pry open the trunk. Did, did, did you see their faces? Of course, there was blood on it. Mother fell on it. Will you prisoner rise and stand before the bar? Jack Tanner, you have been judged guilty of murder in the second degree by a jury of your peers. Before this court pronounces sentence, do you have anything to say for yourself? I'm not guilty. It's you, all of you who are guilty. You broke my back. I couldn't get decent work, and now you're going to put me away. Well, as God is my witness, it was an accident. I pushed her away, and she fell. Now, is, is it my fault she hit her head, the grasping, greedy old liar? What, are you going to stop me from talking, too? You asked me, do I have anything to say? Well, I have. I swear to you all, the day I get out, if I'm 90, I'll see to it that you're all repaid. An eye for an eye. There will be no threats in this courtroom. Are you quite through? Finished? Yeah, I'm finished. I know that. By the authority vested in me by the state of Pennsylvania, I sentence you to 20 years in penal servitude. 20 you years? Will... 20 years? You're going to lock me up for 20 years? You will be taken from this place to the state prison where you will serve out the duration of your sentence. What you're doing is evil. Take him away. It's there. evil. I'll come back and I'll be revenged. You'll see if I don't. <laughs> Anna, you still in the kitchen? Dinner will be ready in about ten minutes, Dad. I hope you don't mind burned vegetables. No, 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 I'm getting used to them. I don't know why I'm so absent-minded. Can't seem to keep my mind on anything anymore. It's hard, Anna, I know. I'll tell you something, Dad. Maybe it's terrible of me to say this. I do miss Jack. As every year goes by, it's harder. But I don't miss the Jack of the last few years before he went to prison... The man he became after that mine elevator crushed him. I miss the husband he was before that. Yes, yes. And you take a big, strong man and cripple him, Anna. You, you cripple his spirit as well. He changed so much, you have no idea. And I still, after five years and three months, I still lie awake at night thinking about what he threatened to do when he got out. Oh, Anna, don't do that. You've got years ahead of you. Twenty. Less five. Well, you could get married again. How could I? I'm married to Jack. I think I read somewhere that you can divorce a man who's in jail for murder. Oh, I can't even think about that now. Oh, did I tell you, Dad? I I'm almost finished with my typing course. <laughs> Glad to hear it. That's what you need. To get out of this house and make new friends. Glad you're going to quit the store. <laughs> Why didn't you tell him that? I, I wanted Dad to, but they wouldn't call him to the stand. But you're my wife. Why didn't you? 
Nobody said anything about the years I worked, about how I never took a dime from anybody. They made me out a thieving, ungrateful son-in-law who broke into your mother's trunk and then broke her head open, and you did nothing, nothing to change that opinion. Jack, well, what's that in your hand? What's this? It, it's that same... It's the iron bar. Yeah. It's a little heavy, isn't it? Where did you get it? I, I thought the police took it. Oh, I just happened to find it. And one little tap from this... You missed me, Anna? Yes, of course I have. You don't sound convincing. I, I have, I have. Dear little wife. Dear little Mrs. Judas. So you're interested in this iron bar, are you? Jack, please, Jack, you're not... You're not... I'm not what? Now, just look how easy it is for me to lift it. You know, I'm very strong. Stronger than I was when I went to prison. You know, you can build up a lot of muscle in five years. Here, you see, I can lift this long, thick iron bar with just two fingers. I wish you'd put that down, Jack. Down? How about softly down on your head? Hmm? After all, if I used it once on your mother, why not use it again? Now, you just lie still, my dear dog. Move. Now, watch. I lift the bar high over your head. <laughs> What's the matter with you? I'm only demonstrating the strength of my arms. Here, you see? Look how easily I can lift it up and down over your head. Do you really think you deserve to live, Anna? I'm so terribly sorry for everything, Jack. I really am. Oh, well, let me look at your face more closely. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. Such a sweet, innocent face. Come on, look straight into my eyes, Anna. Ah, oh, yes, the eyes of betrayal. Did I tell you how strong my fingers are? Now, suppose I just show you. I can just place them... Oh, your throat. No, Jack, no. Here, look, look, look how no. easily, even with one hand, five fingers can circle your throat. Now, if I place two hands here and here, you like my hands on your neck, Anna, so close to you? You'd like to scream, but the words stick in your throat, please, right? Please. Oh, you're begging now, aren't you? Now, what is it you're begging for? Anna, life? Forgiveness? Wouldn't you prefer death? <laughs> ah, yes, I think you would. A nice squeeze. Ever so gently. Tighter. 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 Can you still breathe, dear Anna? I'll let you have one more breath and then... Anna! Anna, wake up! Oh. I heard you scream. Oh. You were having a nightmare. Oh, Father. Father, you won't believe this. Jack was here. No, no, he wasn't, child. No. It was a dream. Is there a... a oh, Dad, that, that iron bar on the floor next to my bed. Iron bar? Uh, of course not, Anna. And uh, there's nothing here at all. Then it was... It was a dream. Yes. Oh, Dad, it was so real. It was... Dad, it was Jack... He'd escaped from prison and he was here in this bedroom. His hands were around my throat. It was horrible. No, no, no. I'll heat you a glass of milk and then you try to get to sleep. For what's left of the night. Sleep? No, I'd be afraid to sleep. Why do I have these nightmares, Dad? Jack blaming me, trying to kill me. Hello, Chuck. I was just going out. Well, hello, Anna. It's a little early for you, isn't it? Oh, I'm catching a bus to the city. Not working at the store anymore? Not for long, I hope. I'm taking my final exam today at the stenographic school. Oh, then get yourself a good job. Yes. I've let too much time slip by. I always said a woman should learn to be independent, especially a woman alone. Uh, can I come inside a minute? Oh, sure, sure. Come on in not going to take long, is it? I, I don't want to miss that bus. No, no, only a minute. I, um, I heard on the radio this morning that the governor is planning to pardon a number of prisoners this month, and, uh, I talked to the warden in Harrisburg. I 
Hope you don't mind. You talked to the... Where Jack is? Right, right. Now, I think he's got a good chance. I don't understand. Well, uh, what the warden said was Jack's had a good record. Of exemplary conduct, he called it, for all these years. And that, and taking into consideration the fact that there was always some doubt as to whether he actually hit your mother. Well, you remember he maintained she had fallen, hit her head? They're, they're going to pardon Jack? Well, it's not a sure thing, but I thought I'd come by and tell you the good news. Jack might be right back here in just a few weeks. Good news? Is it? Or is it perhaps the most threatening news Anne could hear? Be not afraid of sudden fear, says the good book, neither of the desolation of the wicked when it cometh. Ah, but it may take more than the comforting words of the Bible to reassure this woman that freedom for her husband means safety for her. I shall return shortly with Act Three. To return for a moment to the Proverbs, whoso diggeth a pit shall fall therein. It says in the Bible, and he that rolleth a stone, it will return upon him. These very fears plagued the conscience of this young wife. Did she indeed dig a pit of evidence from which her husband could not extricate himself? These apprehensions are driving Mrs. Tanner to distraction. And from there, how far is she from madness? Dad, what am I going to do? Chuck said Jack might be pardoned. How, how can that be? It's not going to happen, Anna. Now, don't worry yourself about what might be. But he said I... Dad, he said he'd kill us all. Al, Jack said no such thing. But that's what he meant. I'm, I'm so afraid. I just feel sick. I have to get away. That's what I'll do. Uh, where would you go? Anywhere, anywhere where he can't find me. Dad, you don't know Jack as I do. How can you leave now? Oh, when you've just got this good job with Angus McPhailin. Now, jobs aren't growing on trees these days. Oh, Mr. McPhailin, I forgot... Dad, do you think maybe he could help? Oh, but what if he can't? I've suddenly got this terrible chill. I can't stop shivering. I can't. Anna, I uh, saw your note on my desk when I came in this morning. Uh, what is it you wish to see me about? Oh, I'll be finished with this letter in a second, Mr. McFarland. It's got to go out this morning. Anna, I have told you to call me Angus. Now, this is a family business. Yes, mister. Uh, uh... Yes, Angus. <laughs> Here, there you are. For you to sign. All right. Now, child, tell me what's troubling you. Well, I've been told the governor may give Jack a pardon. Well, now, that is fine news. You must be very pleased. No, you, you don't understand. When they found Jack guilty, he... We, he yelled out in the court. It was awful. He said someday when he when he got out, he'd get even with those who put him in prison. I see. Do you? Do you really? Well, I do remember reading about it, Anna, in the papers. It was a long time ago. Five years. But if he gets out, I, I, I'm afraid that he might hurt my father and me. Oh, but why would he harm you, his own wife? But Jack was the most wonderful husband any woman could ever want. I loved him, and I know he loved me very much. But after he was hurt in that mine accident, and they wouldn't take him back, well, he, he changed. He, he was full of anger all the time. You don't have to say any more, Anna. He said, I'll get you. That was me, he meant. That's why I have to go away. I had to tell you, Mr. McPhailin... In case you have any advice. Anna, before you do anything hasty, I'd like you to see a friend of mine. He's a very, very good attorney. You know, the law is created to protect the people. And you have rights. Anna? Anna, what are you doing? I'm packing my things. I'm leaving, Dad. Oh, where are you going? I don't know exactly. Some place where I can feel safe, and then I'll come and I'll get you. Oh, I, I thought you were going to see Angus McPhailin's lawyer to see how you could be protected in case Jack was released from prison. I saw the lawyer, Dad, and it's no use. Uh, I'm trapped. Now, now, just slowly. 
What did the lawyer say? He was a very nice man. I said to him, can I leave, Jack? And he said, yes, you can after you get a divorce. But unless there are very special circumstances, it takes a long time. And in order to get that divorce, I'd have to prove that Jack ill-treated me. I can see the problem. Yes, that's what the lawyer said, too. He said I'd need clear proof. But the awfulest part of it is that if Jack comes home, I, I have to live with him in this house as his wife. Dad, what am I going to do? He will kill me as soon as he sees me. I know it. I'll go and have a talk with that lawyer myself. He said, uh, very special circumstances, huh? Well, that's what these are. It'll be all right. Anna, don't look at me like that. Anna, what's the matter? Stop staring. Why, your your hands are icy cold. For heaven's sakes, child, what is it? Yes, sir? Oh, I'm Angus McPhailin. Uh, are you Anna's father? Oh, yes. Come in. Uh, come in by all means, Mr. McPhailin. Uh, thank you. I've heard a lot about you. I thought you were the doctor and that you'd come back because you'd forgotten something. He was just here. Well, I stopped by because I hadn't heard from Anna in a week. And then the news... Uh, I was beginning to get worried. She hasn't been to uh, work. Well, it's all my fault, Mr. McPhailin. I... I should have let you know. You say the doctor's been here? Is she very ill? Well, it, it's been a week of horrors, I tell you. She hasn't spoken one word in seven days. The poor child. Not one word. When she came back from that lawyer that you sent her to, she got bad news. She was packing to leave. Get herself a new place to live. Another identity. She was that frightened of her husband. Oh, it's a sad thing. And suddenly, and just as she was packing, she went into a kind of, uh, of seizure. And hardly knows me anymore. And speaks to no one. I had no idea what it was, why she didn't come to work. So, as soon as I heard the news tonight, I thought I'd come over and see if she knew. What news? Mm, you didn't hear it on the radio? No, I haven't heard it on. Six o'clock news tonight. I came right over. I feel about Anna the way I would about my own daughter. What news, Mr. McPhailin? He's dead. I heard it twice on the radio at the beginning and again at the end of the news. Who's dead? Why, her husband, Jack Tanner, died in prison last night. Jack Tanner is dead? What? Is that true? Oh, Anna, what are you doing down here? You're supposed to be up in bed. Is that true, Angus? Is that really true? Anna... You found your voice. Dear me, girl, I, I didn't mean to get you up. Is that true? I'm afraid so. So, now you have nothing to fear, Anna. Your husband died in prison yesterday. Uh, oh. What is it? Anna, child! Oh, she's well, fainted. So wrought up about everything. Here, uh, please help me lift her. We'll carry her back upstairs to bed. Uh, and then we have a friend in the police force... I can get him to call the warden just to make sure. Hello? Oh, yes, Chuck. Uh, What's that? Say that again. No, I didn't hear the radio, but somebody told me. It's not true. Uh, Mistake? You mean Jack isn't dead? Still in prison? Uh, false rumor. Oh, how these things start. Okay. Yes, I understand. Uh, thanks for calling, Chuck. Another man died with a similar name. Do you really believe someday he'll come back and revenge himself on the two of you? It doesn't matter what I think. It's what Anna thinks. What was that noise? The front door. Uh, yes, maybe somebody came in. Oh, somebody went out. Hey, wait here, Angus. I'll just go upstairs a moment. Mr. McPhailin. Angus. She's gone. Anna is gone. Is this where I buy a bus ticket? Yes, ma'am. Where to? Uh, how, um... 
how far will $25 take me? That depends. On what? Well, I could book you to Providence, Rhode Island, or south to Baltimore, or west to Columbus, Ohio. Providence. That's certainly what I need. Maybe it's a good omen. That'll be twenty-four fifteen. Mm-hmm. Here. Uh, when does the next bus leave for Providence? In exactly half hour. She'll be pulling in about 20 minutes. You can board her then. Say, aren't you Mrs. Tanner? Mrs. Tanner, come back. You forgot your change. <laughs> Another 85 cents for the poor box. Hiya, Mike. Oh, hello, Chuck. Courtney Speeders today. I uh, want you to look at this picture. Um, has this girl come by here in the last hour trying to buy a bus ticket? Well, she sure did. Just a moment ago. That's Mrs. Tanner, isn't it? Uh-huh. Uh, where was she headed? Providence. Just left my window. Hey, is she in some kind of trouble or something? No, but I'll be in a heap of it if I don't find her. Dad, are you home? I got good news today, Dad. I went to see that lawyer again, and he said Hello, that... Hello, Anna. How are you? Jack, it's you. You're kind of surprised, aren't you? I guess I'm surprised, too. Did you... Did you escape? How how did you get out? What? What do you think? I'm crazy? I'm a law-abiding citizen. Didn't you expect me? No. Well, didn't anybody notify you? Nobody told us anything. I was pardoned. Yeah, it's hard to believe they wouldn't tell you. Anna? Hmm? You all right? I, I, I don't know. Maybe they they did tell me, and I just put it out of my mind. Is that possible? Aren't you glad to see me? A long time ago, I had this dream about you coming home. You don't suppose this is a dream, too, is it? Oh, no. No, it's real, and I'm real. And maybe you don't recognize the suit they gave it to me, and and some money I earned. Hey, aren't you going to give me a kiss? No, 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 don't, don't. Okay. Okay, you're the boss. You miss me, Anna? Of course I have. Oh, Lord in heaven. The last time. The dream. Have you missed me? That's what you said. Of course I have. That's what I said. This must be a dream. Anna, you home already? Uh, Jack. Hello, Albert. Is it you? It's me. You know, Anna thinks she's dreaming. Uh, Anna, where are you going? Probably she's gone up to her room. You mean our room? <laughs> now, what's the matter with her? Isn't she glad to see her husband? Jack, I don't know how Anna's going to take your coming back like this all of a sudden. She hasn't been well in all these years. Oh, that seems funny. Instead of welcoming her husband with open arms, she's running away. Like, she's scared of me. coming to bed. It's midnight. Hey, what are you doing standing there in the dark? I, I'm not sleeping. But what if you aren't? You're going to stay up all night? No, 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 no. There isn't room in that bed. What are you talking about? You, you go to sleep. I'll, I'll go down to the living room. There's a book I want to read. I don't understand you. Are you afraid of me? Do you hate me? I'll see you in the morning. You come back here. You understand? Oh, no nonsense. Hey, what is it with you? Your hands are as cold as ice. Ah. Ah. Hey, what do you know? It's morning. I'm home. Yet I clean forgot this is my own bed. Ah. Hey, Anna, wake up. Did I ever sleep great? You know, that's the best night's sleep I've had. Come on, darling, get up. Hey. Anna. It's time for breakfast. Anna. Anna. Oh, no. Great Lord in heaven. Anna. was too short a service. We'll get him one day. 
he'll be back. I know what you're thinking, Chuck. With the coroner's verdict, two doctors. No, there wasn't a mark on her. But a young woman like that to die of a heart attack? I still can't believe it. Nobody can, Chuck. Least of all her husband. I hate that man. It's a good thing he left town. Ah, you're wronging him. He was crying like a baby. And the doctor said her heart just failed her. Oh, look, I'm her father. I felt just like you did, Chuck. How could it be? I said to Jack, she died of fear, that's what. He couldn't understand it. What fear, he said to me. Of you, I said. Of me? Why, I loved her. Thus, conscience doth make cowards of us all. But can it kill us? Frighten us to death? No, it was not only the self-accusing fear that stopped the heartbeat. It was the past, the present. And for Anna, it was the emptiness of the future. I shall return shortly on a slightly more hopeful note. My children are very thin, and they're very small. And I always feel, they gotta eat, they gotta eat. <laughs> Mrs. Ruth Offelbaum tells how she's always been able to get her family to eat well. Kraft macaroni and cheese, through the years, I mean, I know they like it. Even as little babies, I remember I put it on the high chair. And they pick it before they use the fork. And they pick the little noodles up with their fingers. And they, they just always have liked it. They do like it. Kraft macaroni and cheese dinner. You know they're going to like it. Reynolds Wrap. It's the wrap that makes summer more fun. Reynolds Wrap. Wraps up everything under the sun. Heavy-duty Reynolds Wrap sure comes in handy when we go camping. Like for cooking hamburgers or fish over a campfire. Yes, and for making disposable cups and plates. And how about Reynolds Wrap under sleeping bags? Keeps dampness out. The great outdoors wouldn't be so great without it. Reynolds Wrap. Doing heavy-duty Reynolds Wrap. Good morning. Maxwell House Good company. Good to the last drop. Maxwell House. Maxwell House. Coffee you can count on. Always smells good. Always tastes good. Always good to the last drop. Maxwell House. Good coffee. Good to the last drop. Maxwell House. Folks, this is Jim Backus and the Lazy Boy Teddy Bear to tell about Lazy Boy's 50th anniversary. Right, Jim. <laughs> what a celebration. Yes, Lazy Boy dealers everywhere are joining this big event. And now is the time for you to purchase a famous Lazy Boy recliner or swivel rocker. Jim, they can save money, too. Right. And with Father's Day near, a Lazy Boy chair is a perfect gift. What a recliner. And folks, <laughs> that's the Lazy Boy bear facts. That little voice of conscience in us, often called the inner voice, acts like a guardian, reminding us of the truth we already know, nudging us to observe our better instincts, warning against misconduct or misdeeds. Indeed, where would we be without that voice? Renounce it, and the devil is your guide. Listen to it, and you are safe on the side of the angels. Our cast included Larry Haynes, Carol Titel, Russell Horton, and Ray Owens. The entire production was under the direction of Hyman Brown. This is E.G. Marshall inviting you to return to our mystery theater for another adventure in the macabre. Until next time, pleasant dreams. of the Rocky Mountain West. Radio 85, KOA Denver.
CBS News.